Welcome back to the channel. Today we're carrying on the FL Studio series by looking at the Fruity Stereo Shaper, which is an incredibly powerful tool for any sort of stereo enhancement, mid-side processing, left-right processing. It's stock in all editions of FL Studio, so anyone can follow along with this tutorial. It's quite an underrated plugin, and there's a lot of fun and interesting stuff to get to in this video, so let's waste no time and just get right into it. So I've opened up FL Studio and I've got lots of different audio examples to get to, but the first thing is loading the plugin. So it's an effect that you load on the mixer. Wherever you're sending the audio that you'd like to split or effect, in this case I've sent everything to track one, find an empty mixer slot, left click, you should see Fruity Stereo Shaper and just load it up. Now this is one of the only plugins where I'm ever going to tell you that you don't actually need to know what almost any of this does to be able to get fantastic results and just get using it right away because it's more of a utility or a mixing tool than a creative effect. So what I'm going to do is share some really cool things you can just work on right away and then for anyone that's interested, I will go into all the details of what all these different sliders do, because I know that's important for some people. And the reason that you don't really need to know how to use the plugin is that almost every single use case has been covered by the presets, which you can access here with the presets. But I much prefer to simply right click on one of these arrows and it pulls the list. And this covers just about everything you would want to do with the plugin. So we can split mid and side, split the left and right, we can invert channels, all this good stuff, along with some other stereo and cool creative effects, which we'll look at later as well. So the first thing we're going to do if we want to do mid side processing is we want to have one track be the mid and another mixer track have the side channel. And this way we can process them differently. On insert one, I'm just going to middle click with the mouse to rename it. That's mid. And then I'll rename the channel immediately beside it to the side channel. From the mid to the side, I'm going to side chain it. So select the mid channel, right click down here, side chain to this track. No audio is being sent from the mid to the side channel, but if I select the right preset here, it will be sent. So right click, mid A side splitter. And this means that the mid channel is going to remain on that first track and the side signal is going to be sent to that second side track. So it sounds the same right now, but you can hear that I can isolate the side channels or just the mid channel. And this means right away I can change the volume of the mid and side. So let's push the sides up. Hear how that becomes much wider. And this is a more narrow focused signal. So right away, without actually knowing anything about this plugin, you can use these really great presets to just start splitting up your audio. Now, what would you want to use mid side processing for? Well, very simply, you can change the volume of the mid or side channels, but we can do a lot better than that. So let's say we want to load an EQ on the mid channel and another EQ on the side channel. So let's just pull these into focus. You can see mid EQ is here, side EQ is here. You'll hear no difference initially. You can see this is the mid channel, but the side isn't showing any input. So we have to left click down here, monitor input and change that to the side channels. Now you can see this here. And from here, we can do some very basic EQ. We can change the EQ of the mid and side channels. So if I just solo that mid channel, maybe I want to cut a little bit of low end from that channel. And if I then solo the side channel, Maybe I can boost the treble, make it really, really sparkly. This is a bit ridiculous, but it's to sort of just prove a point. Now those mid and side channels together. Let's take a listen with and without. That's such a dramatic difference. And obviously this is just a very simple way to do mid side processing, just changing the volume or EQing the mid and side channels differently. But really the sky's the limit here. You could saturate the mid channel, add a delay to the side channel. There's really no end to the possibilities here. Now we're gonna do a similar thing for left right splitting, but I'm gonna to go to a different audio example. And this time I'm gonna name the mid channel left and this second side channel I'm going to name right because we're going to split it left and right. Let's turn off those EQs because I don't want those changing the sound. 
and instead of the mid side preset we're going to select the left right splitter so the left is going to remain on that first channel and the right will be sent to that second channel it's very important that we have this side chain set up just like last time so that's our whole original guitar signal but you can see that it's been split into the left and the right channels here and you'd want to do this just for the same reasons as doing the mid-side processing. You may want to treat the left and right differently. You may be hearing a distortion only on the right channel that you want to fix. Or maybe you'd like to run the left guitar through a different sort of amplifier as the right just to create some extra stereo width. Of course from here you can also adjust the panning, maybe pull them a little bit closer together. But there are other ways to do that. And another handy use of this is if one of the channels, say the right, is quieter than the left, you can just push it up a little bit, and you don't need to worry about trying to pan anything, you can just balance out channels naturally. Now that you've seen how easy it is to set up a mid-side or left-right split, I hope that's sort of filled you with different ideas of things you could do in your own projects or mixes, and using this as a utility tool, but now I'm going to dive into what all these faders and dials actually do for those that are interested in it. To do this, I'm going to set both of these tracks back to default. So I've selected both of them with control and a left click and drag, right click, reset selected tracks to default. This just clears everything from them, makes it nice and clean, and I'm also going to remove that side chain. So my audio is still going through this first track, and this is where I'm going to reload the stereo shaper. And I think to make this even easier to follow, I'm going to go to the hint bar, right click, and make this detachable hint bar, which you can drag around with this circle. And that way you'll be able to read off on here exactly what the fader or control is. This just makes it much easier for you to actually see what's going on. So let's listen to this piano loop, and you'll hear that this is simply the left channel volume. So now we're just hearing the right channel. So that's the volume, plain and simple. That's it at the original level, that's 6 dB down, and that's minus infinity. So if I take it down into this minus area, you can hear we're still getting volume out of the right channel, but it's a reversed polarity. It's going to sound very, very similar though, and if you want to know more about what a polarity reversal is, I would highly recommend watching my whole polarity and phase video, it will clear all of that up. The important thing here, however, is that while we have this right channel, you'll see that it's linked over here, and we can feed some of the right channel into the left channel. So this is what that would sound like. So you can hear that it sounds mono, but this is not quite the same as folding our original signal into mono. What this is is the right channel being played through the right and left speakers. We can do the same on the left hand side. So this is just the left channel, and now we can add the left channel into the right channel. These four faders create what we call a mixer matrix, and if I get some more audio playing, just by adjusting the positions we can create completely different stereo situations. So if I take the right channel and add an inverted version of the right channel to the left channel, and if I take the left channel and add an inverted version of it to the right channel, see how the signal becomes much wider. So without, it doesn't necessarily sound better, but we're making it appear wider by feeding those inverted polarity versions of the right and left into the opposite channels. Now you can see that this can get a little bit complicated, and honestly the best way to get used to this is to take it very slow, just use a mono signal then a stereo signal, and just adjust it and hear the results for yourself. But if you need to use this simply for the mid side or left right splitting, please just use the presets, they're all there for you, uh, there's no shame in that, usually I'm a fan of trying to do everything from scratch, but in this case we just want to get mixing, we want to get producing, use this as a tool, and then have fun with all your other creative effects. Something that I really do need to talk about though is the in-out difference, and this is how this sidechain works. So when you set up a sidechain from this track, so we're sidechaining from one to two, what this lets us do is that if there's any difference between the input and the output of this plugin, so in this case we're only getting signal from the left, what I can do is send the difference to whichever track I like, so in this case, insert two. 
So we only have left, so the difference between the original and this left signal is the right signal. So the right is sent to insert two over here. So with this set up, whatever I do on here, you won't actually hear as a difference because the difference is being sent to this second channel. So I could do absolutely crazy stuff like this and I'm only gonna hear a difference when I mute one of the channels because they're both playing back together. But this is the feature that allows that side chaining to work. And as long as you have a side chain set up, selecting these presets, you can see that it automatically uh, selects a channel here for you. We're now going to take a quick look at the delay and phase effects. And for this, I've just put it back onto the default patch and I have a mono guitar. It's exactly the same on the left and the right. And what this delay does is simply adds a delay to either the left or the right channel. If I push it very far, you can hear it like this. But if you just do a little bit, it gives the illusion of the signal becoming wider because we're hearing the left and right channels just ever so slightly before or after each other. This is called a Hass delay and there's a lot you can learn about this but the biggest issue is that it's usually terrible for mono compatibility. Now in my mixing in mono video I did say that I don't often care that much about mono compatibility but this is one where it really messes it up. So we're applying this left right delay then folding the master into mono and just hear how bad the guitar sounds. Do you hear how it just disappears? That's good. Adding this delay sounds amazing until you fold it into mono and then it, it really can just completely disappear. So be careful of that. And the phase here is interesting because it's not simply reversing the phase of one channel or the other. This changes the phase relationship between certain frequencies using an all-pass filter, either on the left or the right channel. Just a little bit like that. All these two are trying to do is create a difference of sound between the left and the right channel. Whether you started with a mono signal or a stereo signal, any difference between the left and right, your brain is going to perceive as extra stereo width. The effect position here, pre and post, this is, are these going to be applied before you make adjustments in the matrix or after? It's usually best to do them afterwards. If you put these effects before, then this mixer matrix becomes very unpredictable. That might be great for creative sound design, but it messes up almost all of these presets. From here, I would recommend simply loading up this plugin on some different tracks and experimenting with it. It's probably best not to dive too much more into the theory right now. So that's everything you need to know about the Stereo Shaper, at least to get started using it. But if you want to take it further, please do check out some of my other videos about mid-side processing or left-right EQ, because these sort of expand on the process and uh, take it a lot further. But that's everything for now, so thanks very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.